Hi guys, it's me. I had to jump on here. Um, not long ago I finished a movie with the kids. Well, with Rennie. Junior watched Spongebob Squarepants on my laptop. But um, we watched The Lovely Bones, Rennie and I did. And I had heard it was a good movie to watch with your teenage girls. Um, I would suggest you watch it with your boys and girls. Um, if you're not sure about how old they should be before they watch it, um, you might want to watch it first and then re-watch it with the ones you think are of appropriate age. But there's no sexual, um, sexually explicit language or um, pictures or anything like that. Um, he is a predator. Um, sexual part didn't enter into it. You, I guess they just left you to wonder because probably they wanted you to share this with your children. Um, but there was blood and mud and a burlap sack that was bloody and you knew the little girl was in it. She was about 13 and this was from her perspective. But um, I think it's very important. I think it's an important movie to watch with uh, your age appropriate children. It's a little dark. And one of his victims was a six year old. I don't know that if I had, I'm pretty sure that if I had a six year old I wouldn't um, set them down with it because um, Rennie understood a good bit of it, a lot of it. She's 11, but um, I don't know about a six year old. Um, I don't know that they would, I think they would focus in on the other stuff and not pick up on the piece that was at the end. And it did leave you with a peaceful heart, even though as an adult um, I was angry through it. I, I felt the helplessness, helplessness of the parents through it. Um, oh, uh, I couldn't watch it again. If I, if Rennie wanted to, if she wanted to rehash it and go over it and watch it again, I would, but I wouldn't want to. <laughs> so, um, that being said, if you have children, I think The Lovely Bones is a very important movie to watch with them. And that's all I'll say about that. Um, started the day out this morning uh, with a headache, um, a bad one. I, the, um, I got up. At, Uncle Cece got me up at seven, and um, he, I saw him out the door, and then the kids weren't awake. I peeped in at them, and they were sleeping peacefully. So I just came into the living room. I didn't even make my bed up because I didn't want to wake them. I just came in here, had some breakfast, watched some videos on YouTube, and waited for them to wake up, which was about 9.30. Uh, they're usually up. I mean, they, they wake up when she, Uncle Cece's getting ready for work about 5.30. So, um, I was really surprised that they slept that late. Um, but they did, and um, when they got up, I got them situated with breakfast, and then I went to make up my bed. About the time I bent over the bed to get the sheets straightened up and such as you do, um, it felt like somebody hit me in the back of the head. I mean, I turned around to see if somebody did. It was just this, it was almost like a blow of a headache. It just started almost immediately. It was really strange, really strange. <laughs> um, so much so, after I turned back around, I just laid across the bed. I just laid across the bed. I, uh, I felt nausea from, I guess, from the pain of it. And I just laid there. I just wanted everything to be still and be quiet. And, uh, and the kids ended up finishing up and they came in there um, and crawled in the bed with me, which I was just laying across the top of the sheets, uh, top of everything. And um, I didn't want to just say, you know, please get out of here, please. You know, I didn't want them to be uh, worried or upset that I'd sent them off. So I just kind of dealt with it for a while. But a few minutes of that and I sent them on back up here. But um, because they couldn't be still. But I told them I'm not going to sleep, I'm just lying here. So I laid there for about an hour, um, and it did not abate. 
So I came this close to calling Uncle CC, but I didn't. I got up. I remembered some tension relief headache medicine that I had. So I took that and I thought, okay, give it 30 minutes. If it's not better, I'll call Uncle CC. But it did abate. Uh, it didn't. It never went away altogether all today, but it did abate. Um, I did get dressed and go to Walmart and come back. I feel it creeping back in though, but um, I'll take something when I finish with this video. Um, we had a nice long discussion after dinner with the kids about earning money doing chores. Um, we are not paying them to do, make their beds and clean their room up and clean up after themselves when they take a bath and brush their teeth and stuff. We expect that. But um, Rennie's going to help with setting the table and help with actual cooking the dinner and learning some things. and. Um, loading the dishwasher and unloading. I gotta teach her how to do that. Junior's gonna do trash, some of the smaller trash cans and sweeping the back deck and the front porch and the carport and you know things like that. Um, he's gonna make less money but Rennie's older and um, hers require more responsibility. So she's gonna do bathroom duty as far as base cleaning and um, vacuuming and dusting in the living room and um, we didn't just decide they had to do these jobs we discussed it with them and asked them if they wanted to do it and and they were excited about it um, we had to explain to Jay why he wasn't making as much money as Rennie because you know responsibility and some of the jobs are for older child than him and so he took it pretty well. He, I think he was just excited he was going to earn some money. So he'll earn $10 a week if he does all his jobs. And she'll earn 15 and a quarter. So um, they're very excited. Uncle Cece told them the jobs that they're not paid for, like cleaning their room, picking up their toys, and making their bed, and cleaning up the side behind themselves in the bathroom. Those are unpaid because they're expected of them, just cleaning up after themselves. And um, so he told them if they didn't get those jobs done, he'd, he'd take so much off uh, back from their allowance if they didn't do the ones that they didn't get paid for. So um, they're excited, and we'll see how it works. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we did, we've been talking about a, um, getting a pool above ground, of course, pool one of those Intex pools. Um, it's not a huge one. Um, and Uncle Cece went ahead and ordered it today. Um, we always have the little kitty plastic ones. I mean, like the biggest kitty plastic one, hard plastic one they make. But um, they've outgrown it and we kind of like to cool off ourselves and we can enjoy this one. It's a 12 by 33 inch. I wanted a bit bigger, but Uncle Cece brought up the fact that Jay can't swim and we didn't need it to be <coughs> too high on him so that he couldn't put his feet on the bottom of the pool. So I hadn't thought about that. I don't know why. It just blew past me. I was just thinking bigger, I guess. And um, so that was ordered. It should be here Saturday or Monday. And uh, we're all looking forward to that. And. Um, there's going to be some responsibilities in them helping, you know, keep it ready to swim in. So, unpaid responsibilities for helping keep the pool up. So, um, we had a good evening and we had movies and popcorn and stuff tonight. So, it's <coughs> with the headache that's st <coughs> still there, uh, it seemed like the day that would never end, but it was good through it. They wanted sloppy joes, oh, disgusting. But that's what they wanted, and Rennie was able to make it start to finish. I did the french fries, and she did the sloppy joes. And um, of course, I supervised her with the stove and stuff, but she was very proud of it, so I was happy to have eaten disgusting sloppy joes so she could be proud of her accomplishment. So that's kind of how our day went, and now it's about bedtime, and Uncle Cece's lurking in the <laughs> corner of the room waiting to say, I'm going to bed.